to the book of Exodus. Amen. We still passed the blood priest of dynamic message on last week. And uh, I preached the week before uh, out of the book of Exodus. And I still, that message is still percolating. And still some being on the bone. Uh, so I want you to go with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 14. And then our subject on today will be dealing with bringing honor to God. We'll be halfway. Amen. Brings honor to God. The halfway brings honor to God. Now let the church stand. Thank you, Lord. And we certainly do. Thank you, praise the Lord, for once again all of you that are here on today. I don't take it as a light thing uh, that you come out to be with us. As it was already testified that some people had to go through some struggles. And then the enemy tries to block you from coming to the household of faith. And though I heard one testimony as such, I'm sure, I'm not fooled. I know that some of us, if we were given another opportunity to tell, we would say the same thing. And the devil tried to stop us. And I thought about prayer, but I remember it as such. In the morning, I pray on Sunday morning, I said, Lord, loose souls that are trying to come to the household of faith. Because I know that the enemy is always trying to show himself strong. But God is greater. Amen. Amen. Greater is he. That's right. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Ah, oh, my God. My God. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Lord. The Lord even allowed me to understand that even, even if you don't have his anointing in you and the Holy Ghost, he, God is giving you a will and a desire. And that will and the desire that he has given you is even stronger than the enemy. And then the devil only has an opportunity to uh, suggest things. He can never make you do things. Amen? If that were the case, everybody would be wiped out before they came to the household of faith. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Thank God. Come on, give God the praise. Hey, glory. Man, I'm preaching already. Thank you, Jim. The book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 14. And we realize that this is the scenario that the children of Israel are coming out of the land of Egypt. And uh, Moses has already gone to Pharaoh and gave him the edict from God to let my people go. Hallelujah. So verse 16. Uh, let us read. It reads as thus. But God told Moses, but lift up thy God. Let us read. Lift up thy God. In the midst of the sea. Verse 17. Amen. And let us go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 43. My God. My God. When you have to say that, uh, begin reading verses 1 and 2. What does it say? I will die. 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 I will die.
the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for a ransom, Ethiopia, and city for thee. Amen. And then drop down then with me to verse 16. What does it say? Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we stand here in the sacred place, we ask you, Lord, that you anoint my mind and my spirit, that you bring forth your word in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And as we can see in our scripture, amen, I want to talk preach to you on today and prophesy unto you in your spirit from the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 14, specifically from the verse 17, God says that I and I, you notice that word, he says, behold, he wanted them to take notice, take notice. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will give me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon his hosts, upon his chariots, upon his horses. In other words, God is saying that I will give honor upon the enemy. I will give honor upon the enemy. You see, God is always, always looking to show himself strong and mighty. He's always looking to show himself strong and mighty in those that put confidence and trust in him. He's always looking to show himself strong and mighty to those that are serious about their walk with him. And what I like about this particular verse is that God himself, he always sets up the scenario. The scenario to bring glory and honor to his name. That's why we can say from the scripture that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And the promises that God makes in his word are promises to those who literally trust in him. Those that turn their hearts and their minds toward him for great deliverance. And any time an individual seeks to have God intervene in their lives, God will set up a scenario in order to bring about glory and honor. And he does it for his name's sake. When the children of Israel, when they were coming out of Egypt, God literally sent Moses there as his representative to set the scenario. They were down there for, the Bible says, 400 years. And they were down there in pain and toil until they called on the name of the Lord. And when God commissioned Moses to go down there, to tell Pharaoh to set my people free. The Lord said this, he said, I heard the cry of my people and I have come down to deliver them. God said, I heard their cry and I've come down to deliver them. And you know the story that, that, that God set up those plagues and things such as that to happen and and then God set the scenario and during the Passover that he killed all the firstborn. And, and every time God got ready to, 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 to move and Pharaoh got ready to let the people go, the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. 
after the first after the first plague, the Bible Pharaoh was ready to let him go. The Bible said God hardened his heart. The second plague, the Pharaoh got ready to let him go. The Bible says God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Uh, down to the tenth plague, God said that He hardened Pharaoh's heart. Uh, and you see, God, if we serve a God that is always in control, God is never outright control, but God is always in control. When the, when the enemy wanted to let the people go, God said himself, not yet. Hallelujah, because I need to get me some glory. I need to allow my, my handiwork to show that I'm, I'm God and that there's nobody else beside me, that I'm God Almighty. Hallelujah. Have you ever had a thought in your mind that God, why do you allow trouble to hinder or trouble to hang around me? Hallelujah. Why do you let this testing trial just linger? Because God is setting up the scenario so that he can get some glory. Hallelujah. If God got rid of everything in the beginning, my God, nobody would know that God is strong. Nobody would know that God is a mighty God. So God, he literally has to set up the scenario for him to get some glory. Yeah, uh, so we see somebody. here that God is looking to get glory and to set the scenario so that everybody will know that he's God. Uh, yeah, so that everybody will know that he's God all by himself. I'm uh, thinking about the sister Felicia's testimony. It was right down the alleyway of the sermon. She said that her lights, we received the, the disconnect from her light bill, but she paused and God said, just acknowledge me in all of thy ways so I can direct thy path. So she begins to seek God uh, in her pause and, and God was able to already set up the scenario that when she called Penelope, she said, they said, we've already got your application and we've already taken care of everything because your God had already gone before you and he set things up so that you could come out more than a conqueror. Um, and just like Sister Louise said, her, her toothache and she was all obsessed and it was all pussy. I'm sure it was kind of nasty. Thank you, Lord, but God had already gone before her. Hallelujah. Didn't allow, didn't allow the poison to enter into her system because God wanted to receive glory and honor. Come on, clap your hands up and give God a praise. You see, when we begin to ask God for his help, when we begin to call on the name of the Lord for his help, hallelujah, God always leads us on a pathway that brings him glory and honor. Hallelujah, the children of Israel ask God for his help, and God led them in a pathway by the Red Sea in order to give glory and honor upon him. His name. You see, God could have took them by the way of the Palestinians, but the God said that the Palestinians were people of war, and He said, I want to take Israel that way, at least they see war and turn back to Egypt. Hallelujah. So He took them through the wilderness of the Red Sea. Hallelujah. And when they took them through the wilderness of the Red Sea, yeah, the enemy thought that they were confused. Uh, the enemy thought that they had made a wrong turn. Uh, but God was always in control. Uh, when the enemy thinks uh, that you're confused, uh, when the enemy thinks that you're out of control, uh, it is literally God uh, who is literally in control. Uh, tell your neighbor God is in control. Uh, God is in control. 
my God, we see here that the children of Israel, as they stepped out in the wilderness experience, uh, and the children uh, were being fought by the Pharaoh's army, uh, it looked like danger was on the scene. Uh, you see, any pathway that God takes you through, uh, he sets up a scenario, uh, and it's always going to look like danger. Now, it's always going to look like a problem. Now, it's always going to look like the enemy is going to overthrow you uh, and to overtake you. Do not have any real believers in the house on your bed. Do not have anybody uh, that have gone through a wilderness experience, uh, uh, but your God showed himself greater. Uh, your God showed himself stronger. Uh, your God showed himself mightier. Uh, hallelujah. And that's the it looks like. But the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Where it may look dangerous, where it may feel dangerous, we've already heard that God is in control. We serve a God that has never lost a battle. We serve a God that knows all things. He's omnipresent, He's omniscient. And he's on the point. Oh my God, that's why the Bible says, lift up your head, oh ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory, who shall come in. You see, when you're in a situation where it seems like the enemy is trying to overtake you, you got to say what Moses said to the children of Israel, stand still. Oh my God, you got to stand still so that you can see the salvation of the Lord. Don't be weary in their doing, for he shall weep if you faint not. Now is not the time to fall by the wayside. Now is the time to stand. The Bible says stand. Having your knowledge good about the truth. Stand. Put on the little arm of the God. Stand. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Stand. Taking the shield of faith to put you all the fiery darts of the wicked. Stand. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Stand. Put on the helmet of salvation. Somebody says, Stand. Stand. Taking the spirit of the Spirit, which is the word of God, so that you can use that spirit to slay the hand of the enemy, so that you can overcome in the midst of your test and of your trial. You see, God doesn't let you run in the midst of adversity. God wants you to stay. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. And while I'm standing, I'm going to wait on the Lord. And I'm going to be of good courage. And so we can strengthen my heart. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is trying to defy the armies of God? Lift up your hands. And be lifted up, you everlasting girls, and you'll see the king of glory. He will come in. You'll see the king of glory. He'll enter into your situation. He'll enter into your battle. He'll enter into your fight. Yeah, because our last time I checked, that the prince of hell shall not prevail. But I'm ready to show up into the battle, and you're keeping with the things of hell. And I said that they don't prevail against you. Come on and clap your hands. And give God the praise. Give God the praise.